Hey, Penrith Baptist Church, uh, happy Easter. Uh, he is risen. He is risen indeed, or hallelujah, or amen, or however you would normally respond to those words on Easter Sunday, he is risen. And uh, what a great day that we get to celebrate today. It is the reason uh, this day, what Jesus did on this day, um, is the whole reason why we celebrate um, Christianity and, and who we are and who Jesus is. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. Um, and we've just had a, an amazing weekend so far, um, celebrating Easter, remembering uh, Jesus, coming together on Good Friday, where Mark talked about the passion of Christ and how his passion was to exchange our sinful passion so that we could live with a passion for him. And uh, that was a really special uh, service and opportunity for us to, to remember that uh, and to maybe understand a bit of the gravity of what Jesus went through um, on that Good Friday that we call Good Friday, uh, an amazing Friday for us um, and a uh, horrible in, in so many ways. Uh, day for Jesus, but we call it Good Friday because ultimately the plan of heaven was in motion and uh, for us to be able to come into this amazing relationship with Jesus. And so we talked about that a bit on Good Friday, but today we talk about Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. And it's uh, today, the message for us today, uh, following on from Good Fridays, the Passion of Christ. Today, we've called this message, Our Passion for Christ. So it was his passion for us. And now, because of what he's done, we have passion for Christ. And uh, this Sunday is also a little bit of a launch and a perfect launch into our focus for the next week's called Revive, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but it's about because, again, because of what Jesus has done, that we stir up our passion to live for him and uh, and for all the things that he's enabled us to do uh, for him and with him and, and because of him. So we're going to be talking about that more in the weeks to come, but today is like the launch uh, in so many ways. And what a great day to launch into this next season for us, uh, talking about us being revived in our passion for Christ. Uh, so let's pray and then we're going to get into the message. Lord God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done for us. And today we celebrate a risen Saviour. Lord, we, we know that you died and we, we talked about that. We focused on that on Good Friday. You died on that cross, but you didn't stay dead and you rose again on the third day and we celebrate that this Easter Sunday. So Lord, as I hopefully share your words with us today, um, Lord, help me to do that. Speak through me. Lord, speak in spite of me. But Lord, speak to us today that we may catch an even better glimpse, a bigger glimpse of Christ and what you accomplished for us on that cross and by rising back from the dead. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to actually just wind the clock back a little bit to that Friday and reading from... Uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. It's just going to give us a little bit of context about what we're talking about today in Matthew 27, starting with verse 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life, and they came out of the tombs after Jesus' 
resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. But when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Now, I just want you to think for a moment about what that moment must have been like. The Roman centurion who had all day long been a part of the torture of Christ. We don't know what his specific role was, but he was certainly participating in that crucifixion and everything that led up to that point where Jesus was arrested and where he was struck in the face and his beard had been plucked out and uh, he'd been punched. He had a crown of thorns hammered into his head. And that's before we even get to the cross because then he was whipped, horribly whipped, um, and then suffered on the cross, nails through the hands. And, and all this time, the centurions, the, the Romans, the guards, the soldiers, they're, they're loving inflicting this torture on Jesus. In fact, the, even the, the Jewish people hours before were calling out for crucify him, crucify him. And there was so much hatred poured upon Jesus. And the, and the things that he suffered and the things that he was subjected to. And here's this Roman centurion who's been a part of all of that, has been cheering all of this on. We don't know. He may have been one of the ones who were involved in nailing Jesus' hands to the cross or his feet, sticking, uh, well, later a spear would be struck into his side, but that happened later. When Jesus was, was thirsty, you would think that after a man had suffered everything that he had suffered, they could have at least given him some water, but no, as if to, to show the depravity of humanity even more, they give him vinegar to drink. There was so much hatred poured upon Jesus. And then we see this moment where we read about the earth shaking and the rock split and the tombs are broken open. And there's an earthquake. And then he has this realization, surely he was the son of God. After all of those things are done to Jesus, he, he eventually came to this place. Surely he was the son of God. I wonder if he had a moment of what have we done? What have we done to Jesus? What have we done to this man? Surely he was the son of God. His eyes were opened now to the reality of who Christ is or who in that sense, in terms of, who Christ was. Surely he was the son of God. And I don't know, we don't know how hard and how deep that must have resonated in him. But the fact that we have that written down in the Bible today means it must have gone deep, means it must have been so important for him to realize that, to come to that realization moment and I guess we can have that too, right? We can have those moments where we, we can maybe sometimes get a little bit complacent and sometimes we can get a little bit careless and sometimes we can get a little bit selfish and prideful. And then we come back to the cross and look upon Christ and go, wow. And he died for me. He died for all that stuff that I've done. Surely he was the son of God. And so that's the first part of this message today is this that realization with that centurion, surely, surely he was the son of God. But it gets better than that. In Colossians chapter three, the first three verses says these words, since then you have been raised with Christ Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. 
seated at the right hand of God. No longer surely he was the son of God. Now we have a context of Christ is. He was, but he is. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. Your life is now, right now, in this moment, right now, as you're listening to my words, your life right now is hidden with Christ in God. So we have now a bigger picture of Jesus. Surely he was the son of God, but we also know that he is the son of God, that he is alive. That's what we celebrate today. That's why we are so joyful uh, on Easter Sunday because we celebrate that Jesus died, but he rose again, demonstrating his victory over sin, demonstrating his victory over death. And he is alive. And that's why we praise God. That's why we say he is risen. He is risen indeed because he was, but he is. And that's why we celebrate. That's why we rejoice in this day. Because our saviour is no dead, no longer dead, but he is alive. And that we would set our minds on things above, set our hearts on things above. When we set our hearts and we set our minds on things above where Christ is, who is seated at the right hand of God, when we set our hearts and minds in that place, we remind ourselves that Jesus is he is, he's not a was, he is. And how amazing is that thought when we stop and we think, surely he was the son of God and surely he is still alive in the son of God, seated in heaven, victorious. Um, amazing, amazing thought for us to think about. He was and he is. And the last thought for today, and you probably know where this is going, but in Revelation chapter 22, verse 20, these are the last words of Jesus in the Bible that we read about that, that is quoted in Revelation. It's pretty much right at the very, very, you went to the last page of your Bible in the book of Revelation, you'll see these words. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. He was and he is and he is to come. He was and he is and he is to come. What amazing news. You know, when we look around at the world today, it's so hard to to find hope. It's, it's so hard to, to see how, how our world's going to get better, how we're going to treat each other better as people. And it's hard for us to see that sometimes that, but, and we, and we can lose hope. We can just think things are going to keep getting worse and worse and worse, and we're just going to implode. But no, he was and he is, and he is to come. We have that hope. We have that assurance. And we have that promise. And a couple of chapters before that, we read these words in Revelation chapter 19. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord, oh God, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride, talking about the church, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. And fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. The day is coming. He was and he is and he is to come. And there's this picture, this word picture of the bridegroom being Christ and the church being the bride coming back, coming together for this amazing day. Whenever that day 
comes. And it's referred to in the picture that we see here is a, is a wedding day. And it talks about, and the bride has made herself ready. Now, on now, uh, when Sam and I got married uh, in 1995, um, Sam made herself ready. Every bride makes herself ready for the wedding day. And what does that mean? It, it's, it's the hair, it's the nails, it's the preparation, the months of preparation before that. It's what's the day going to look like. But it's the, it's the whole thing, right? It's the, it, it, it's, it's the dress and what's the dress and, and even the smallest of details. And, she's, and she may making herself ready on that day for her and I to be married. And when she was walking down that aisle and I saw my bride coming towards me, it was, it was so beautiful. I admit I was crying. It was so beautiful. And uh, just to, for, that, for that moment and the special, specialness, that's not a word, but the specialness of that moment uh, was, was, was wonderful in so many ways. And she had been up since the early hours, making herself ready with the bridesmaids and, and doing all those things that they do. And that was her making herself ready. But for us, church, how do we make ourselves ready for Jesus? Because he was and he is and he is to come. And that day is going to be amazing. And we're, we're called, we're told to be ready, to be ready for that day. And those words that we read talking about the, the clothes, and I'll just go back and read that for a moment. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. That's talking about how we live out our lives for Jesus, how we live our lives out for him, devoted to him, our passion for Christ. That's what we're talking about today, our passion for Christ in response to his passion for us that we, his church, would make ourselves ready for that glorious day and that we celebrate every day. I'm going to say it again because he was and he is and he is to come. What an incredible hope we have. So today, as we celebrate Easter, as we celebrate this Easter Sunday, I'm praying that those words just keep ringing in our ears today. Surely he was the son of God. Amen. And he is. And he's seated at the right hand of the father, victorious. And we now live in that victory that he purchased for us. We are now more than conquerors because Jesus was the conqueror. Nothing can separate us from the love. Our life is now hidden in Christ with God. It's, it's amazing for us to think about he was and he is and forever he will be and he is to come. Let today be a celebration of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, we just praise you today. We thank you for, uh, Lord, this incredible promise that we have Lord, I know that we can talk about the cross and we can talk about the resurrection of Christ so much and from so many different ways. And we could be here for, for days upon days, still even learning. We thank you, Lord, that we can come and celebrate today our risen Saviour. Lord, and I pray that those words, like I just said before, would just ring in our heart. Remind us today. And in the days to come that he was and he is and he is to come and that we will worship you forever, that we will sing praises to you forever. Worthy is the lamb who was slain, but you rose again for us to have that life with you forever and ever. Such great love. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.